Hello and welcome to this episode of the podcast. Today I'm going to talk to you about a recent murder that took place in England, uh, just outside of London, on November 25th, 2020. Uh, I'm going to go through schizophrenia, paranoid schizophrenia, what it means. I'll give you the facts of the case first, then I'll give you my own opinion. If you do end up liking this video, please subscribe on YouTube and follow on Spotify. So, a man who suffers from paranoid schizophrenia beat his mother to death with a cricket bat at their home in London. Shanil Patel, age 32, of Ealing, West London, has been given an indefinite hospital order after he beat his mother to death with the cricket bat. He attacked 62-year-old Hansa Patel in the living room of their home in Drew Gardens, which is in Greenford, again, that's just outside of London, while her husband took a nap upstairs on November 25th, 2020. Despite the best efforts of London Ambulance Service, paramedics, Miss Patel was pronounced dead after suffering several head injuries. Patel, who has suffered from paranoid schizophrenia since 2009, left the house shortly after the attack. He was arrested the following morning. Miss Patel was a retired hospital worker, previously working at Ealing Hospital. She had left her role to care for her son, who suffered frequent hallucinations and psychotic episodes. And I can only imagine that must have been really, really tough for her. Like imagine as a parent, you need to quit your job because your child is ill. Like that can, that can be emotionally and mentally very, very, uh, sorry, very draining. Um, now in a trial of facts at the Old Bailey, the majority of the jury ruled that Patel committed the acts that led to his mother's death. It was heard that he remains unwell and poses a serious risk to the public. Dr. Mark Jenneret told the court about Patel's condition, stating that there was a risk of self-harm and that he would struggle to cope in the community due to his condition. He said, I suspect it would take a very long time to get him back to a state in which he can function outside of a hospital environment. There is the risk that he's going to have residual symptoms for the rest of his life. Dr. Jenneret added that Patel had also shown low-level aggression to members of his family and others before the killing. Judge Anthony Leonard QC said Patel was very sick and will not leave hospital as he posed both a risk to himself and members of the public. He addressed Patel's father and said that it may be of some comfort that his son bears no mental responsibility for what he has done, calling it a tragic case. Judge Lennon said, I am satisfied he is suffering with a mental disorder, namely acute paranoid schizophrenia. Patel's illness had been managed by medication, but on the day of the incident, something appeared to have triggered the sustained and violent attack on his mother. Lisa Wilding, who was the prosecuting lawyer, previously said, Chanel's illness would come in ebbs and flows, but he had found the first lockdown hard. Although he seemed to be coping better with the second, he suffered from hallucinations that had previously told him to hurt people, but Chanel had been able to control them. The court heard that Patel was lost in contact with mental health services shortly before lockdown. On December 6, 2021, Patel was handed a hospital order without a time limit. Now, I think what's interesting in this story is COVID and how lockdown, the psychological effects of lockdown, I have someone very near and dear to me who was in college and during lockdown, they suffered a psychotic break. They started to see hallucinations. They started to hear things. In fact, this friend of mine would continuously listen to music. He'd always need headphones on to, to help him ignore these voices that he could hear. And I think because we've all been isolated and because we've all had to stay at home, we're not out in the open, we're not engaging with nature, we're not interacting with other people to the same degree that we used to prior to COVID, I don't think we are talking enough about the psychological effects that is having. Now, in terms of schizophrenia, it's typically diagnosed in the late teen years to the early 30s, and given Chanel is 32, it makes sense, and tends to emerge earlier in males compared to females. A diagnosis of schizophrenia often follows the first episode of psychosis, 
Now, when individuals first display symptoms of schizophrenia, gradual changes in thinking, mood, and social functioning often begin before the first episode of psychosis, usually starting in mid-adolescence. Schizophrenia can occur in younger children, but it is rare for it to occur before late adolescence. Now, in terms of the psychotic symptoms, they include altered perceptions, abnormal thinking, odd behaviors. People with psychotic symptoms may lose a shared sense of reality and experience themselves and the world in a distorted way. Specifically, individuals typically experience hallucinations, you know, like hearing voices or seeing things that aren't there, delusions, which are firmly held beliefs not supported by objective facts, being paranoid, irrational fears, um, the, the, this notion that somebody or something is out to get to you. Uh, they also have what's known as a thought disorder, which includes unusual thinking or disorganized speech. Now, I mention this because my friend who is currently suffering this delusion was huge. He would start to say things about events that did not happen with people who would never have done what he said, you know. And in terms of the negative symptoms, this also includes a loss of motivation, disinterest or lack of enjoyment in daily activities social withdrawal, difficulty showing emotions, and difficulty functioning normally. And this, again, I mentioned my, my friend, and I mentioned this case with Chanel, because I can understand what's going through Chanel's head, the, the person that committed this crime, right? I mean, obviously, I haven't been in their head, so I don't truly understand, but you understand what I'm saying. Because I've seen my friend go through this, firstly, the social withdrawal. They tend to just stay in their room, right? Or they tend to sit in the corner, or they want to be alone. Or a lot of the time, they just sit in there quietly. And when someone asks them a question, they just normally give a one-word answer. You know, someone that's suffering from this kind of uh, psychosis. Again, I'm not, it's not a criticism. It's just an observation to what I have experienced, you know, from, from other people suffering from this. Now, specifically to individuals who also suffer from this, they typically have reduced motivation and difficulty planning, beginning and sustaining activities diminished feelings of pleasure in everyday life. They also suffer from what's known as flat effect or reduced expression of emotions via facial expression or voice tone. And they generally just start talking less because there's a lack of confidence in what they're going to say. They are, they are disinterested in reality as they're continuously going through a mental battle of seeing things and hearing things. The cognitive symptoms include problems in attention, concentration and memory. For some individuals, the cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia are subtle, but for others, they are more prominent and interfere with activities like following conversations, learning new things or remembering appointments. And you'll notice if ever you've spoken to someone who's suffering from this kind of mental issue, they can't hold a conversation for more than 10 to 15 seconds because they become paranoid or they start to see the hallucination that they experience. Again, I'm not, this isn't a criticism. I'm just telling you exactly how these people act. And when I, when, when I tell you all this, I, I'm trying to give you a further indication of why he was, uh, why Sanil was classed as insane, right? Uh, criminally insane and why he's in a hospital and not in a jail cell. He was a clear case where his actions were not intentional and something else was going on as he had difficulty processing information. He had problems using information and also he had troubles focusing and paying attention. Who knows why he got this problem? It could be genetics, it could be his environment, it could even be just the structure of his brain and the function of his brain. And earlier when I was telling you about Sanil, I did tell you that he did not see his uh, psychiatry and uh, medical personnel for like what, a year? Maybe two? Like since COVID started, he hasn't, I don't know if he's had any medication, he clearly hasn't had anyone to talk to and he's literally been trying to figure this out all by himself. And maybe, maybe. See, I've always, I always feel like 99% of the time when we're angry and we do stuff we shouldn't do, if only we had someone to talk to in that moment that we could just tell how we feel, everything could have been so different. And I feel in the case of Chanel, during this time in COVID, I don't think he had anyone to talk to. I don't think when he was feeling you know, signs of depression or whatever it may be, right? When, when he's hearing these voices, when he's seeing these hallucinations, I think if, you, if somebody was there with him and he could just tell him what he's feeling and he could tell him exactly what he's, what he's seeing or try to, right? Like, you know, when he's, when he's probably had headphones in his ear or something to rid the noise he's hearing, right? If somebody was there 
trying to tell him, hey, this is okay. We'll get through this. Maybe he didn't need to bottle in everything he was feeling and he could have felt a whole lot better. So I hope this podcast is giving light to how COVID is affecting people beyond the virus. Um, and I hope they all and we all come out from this very soon. Thank you for listening.